What's your name and where, where are you from? Francis Lenehan, 12 Pierce Terrace, Arglow. I was and born 31st of January 1945 in Pierce Terrace, Arglow. And Francis, when did you go work in Arglow? In the Patry. Yeah, well, I started working in the Patry in 59, 3rd of February 59. Yeah. And, uh, How old were you? 14. And were there any of your brothers or sisters working there? Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? I had, that time I had about one sister working in our, could have been two, and my father. And you worked there until when? Oh, uh, probably October, and then I left. Yeah. And how many years did you work in the factory? I'd say about 30 altogether. Yeah. Why did you go to the pottery? Because uh, there was a job there going there, so I took it. And I was 14. I was 14 that Friday and I started that Monday. Yeah. And were your other, any of the other family members working there at that stage? Uh, father and sister, two sisters, probably. And otherwise, if you didn't go to work there, what would you have done? Oh, probably stop the school. And when you went in at the age of 14, what jobs did you get? Uh, office boy, messenger boy, you know. What would that entail? Well, I'd leave my house in the morning at 9 o'clock, about 5 to 9, and the post office opened at 9, so I went in and I collected the post, brought down to the pantry. I went into the office, that was Mr. Coney's office, and put on his desk. Walked out then, and uh, I used to go into the reception. Then, if anyone wanted anything done, they called me over the intercom and told me what to do. Yeah, be probably a message from one office to the other, or something like that, or papers carried down from one office to the other, orders, things like that, yeah. <clears throat> and would you do that all during the day? Yeah, yeah, and at 10, yeah, 10 o'clock then I'd go for the second post, yeah. And that's up to the town then? That's up, up yeah, the main street, and then I'd, at the post office I'd collect the post and bring, bring it back down to the factory. Yeah, the post was all in a briefcase. The briefcase was locked, so I just put on Mr. Coney's desk, and then he'd open it and go through the other letters, orders, things like that. And uh, how else would your day pan out? What else would you do, would you do during the course of the day? Oh. Uh, just any messages I was wanting to be done. If they're unsure of anything or anything, I'd go up the town and get it, you know. And uh, then about 12 o'clock, I'd go to the bank with uh, the money, checks, whatever it was, and uh, I'd lodge it in there. And how long did you stay at that job for? About 10 months. And why did you leave? Oh, I just left. <laughs> just born. <laughs> yeah. And where did you go then? Oh, uh, <coughs> I think I went into a bar, yeah. So, um, I walked in the bar then for a while. Yeah. That time, like, they used the bottle. We'd be washing the bottles and we'd be bottling the beer and all like that. They used to do that in every bar that time. And we'd be capping it. To be capping machines. <coughs> and 
Francis, you, you came back to the factory then? Yeah. When did you come back? Oh, when I was about 16. Yeah. And then I got a job that was small on them. That, that consisted of, there was a maker making plates and cups, things like that. And you carry them into the ovens and carry out the dry ones. And you do that all day long. That's why they call them all running. You had to be fast. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, probably stopped at that for a few years. And how, how, how many would you be carrying into the killings? Oh, I think it was about uh, sometimes two and sometimes three. Yeah, two to three all the time. Yeah. And what would you be carrying them on? Your hands. Yeah. You put one on your arm and two on your hands. And you put them onto the, the V trolleys for the wear. You put the three on and then you take three dry ones off and bring them back out. And you put them back down to make them, make them again and it was all over again. You had to be fairly fast because he'd be making boy oh, there's a uh, hundred dozen in a day. That was some speed. <laughs> yeah. That was maybe hand now. Yeah. They were the hand built ones. Yeah, uh, uh, what do you call them? Yeah, it was uh, it was hand it was all hand that time and uh, Machines used to walk the rope. Yeah, a rope and go around and around, you know, and the machine would be turning. Yeah. Who worked with you there, can you remember, that in the mold room? Uh, Jim O'Neill. He said, um, Yose. I, th I don't know his first name was Jimmy, I think. Um, it was three of us, yeah. And where were they from, Francis? Arco, yeah. So you were taking the. They are dead now, yeah. Yeah. So. so you were you were you were on the thing called the mold run, was it? What was it called? Was it called the mold, mold running? Mold running. Yeah, mold running. Yeah, yeah. What kind of distance would you be have to travel? Oh, the uh, about ten, ten yards, both from there to there. Yeah, be all open, so like the machines making the stuff and the maker would be there, and you would have to get them this size and bring them in to the oven and throw them onto the trolleys and take the other ones off. Take the ones that were fired off. Yeah. The ones that was cold to you. So where you were working, it was a fairly warm spot, was it? Yeah, it'd be warm in the summer and cold in the winter. There'd be a trap coming through it. It was big open sheds, like, yeah. It wasn't like modern factories for there, yeah. Um, did, you uh, wear, did you wear any kind of protective gloves or...? No. <laughs> <laughs> there was no protection that time. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, your arms would all get burnt, you know, from the heat of the moulds. Yeah. Did you ever drop any? Pardon? Did you ever drop any? Oh, yeah. And your man would give you a few kicks then. <laughs> you were just trying not to know it again. <laughs> um... The maker's hand at fingers now, it'd be raw. <laughs> yeah, it was nothing modern when we got to that time. Like, that'd be from the cups or the saucers and when he'd be putting his hands on it. You know, the spinning around, the wear down the tops of his fingers. How many years did you spend in, in that department? I'd say about three or four, maybe five. Yeah. So you were still only a chap at this stage? Yeah, probably 19 or 20. Then I went in and... 
Where did you go in England? Uh, Yorkshire. I got good money over there. Nine pound ten shillings a week. <laughs> and what was the what were the wages in our club? Uh, it must have been around seven or eight, like the, maybe ten. Yeah, it was but in around the same the money. And what would a young lad like you do with that money? Well, in England it was a fiver for my days. And you had about four pound tensions left then. Um, Socialising, things like that, cigarettes. Yeah. Didn't go far. <laughs> then you send home money as well. You might send home two or three pounds. Yeah. And you know when you worked in our when you worked in our club though, when you had your wage at the end of the day, what did you spend it on here? Oh you didn't have much choice to spend it, it was took off you. <laughs> yeah. I started in the party two pounds a week and probably shouldn't for the bike. But they gave it in an envelope, cash, and what do you call it? The father told I was only getting two pounds a week, but I was getting two pounds for shillings. So I went to the canteen and boiled the kettle and break the seal on the envelope and take the five shillings out and put it in my pocket and seal it back then, <laughs> give it to him, the two pounds in it. And then he gave me five shillings back. So then what I done is we went to the features, which was one and six. We got a bottle of orange and a bone, which was six pence. That was two shillings. We got two bottles of salt <laughs> and maybe sweets. That was the five shillings gone. And then, what do you call it? Sunday, I got seven papers. And I got seven shillings. So that done me then for the week for cigarettes. And yeah, I used to get 20 cigarettes, so it was three shillings, I think. Yeah. And the pictures maybe one night a week or not. So your father then would take the few bob off you for the keep the upkeep of the house, I suppose. Oh. Well, yeah, he, he uh, yeah. well, the father and mother, like, yeah. yeah, you had to give it up. Everyone was in the same board. Everyone had to give up the money. But it's not like you and today. They get the money and the mother and the father wouldn't know what they're doing. <laughs> and your father was working there in the factory, wasn't he? Yeah. And who else was working there? Sisters. I had, uh, there were six of us, well, or five of us working there at one time. All of us, yeah. And can you tell me your father and mother's name? Your uh, father and mother's name? Michael Linehan was a father, and my mother was Molly Mackenzie. Yeah, her father come from Belfast. Yeah. And what were your brothers and sisters' names? Uh, Lila, Sella, Eileen, Michael. Yeah, there was four. <clears throat> And at one stage, there were five years working there. Yeah, five years, yeah. And you know where you lived? Were there many other houses working in the factory? Nearly everyone out of every house working in the factory. Yeah, there was always someone out of the family working in there. Yeah, I was a big employer. I was the biggest employer in Airflow. And... You went off to Inge Yorkshire and you came back. Yeah. Where did you come back to? Pottery. <laughs> yeah. And where did you go this time? Uh, I think it was called the Biscuit Warehouse. That's where the, the, the clay was already fired, you seen her biscuit. And then that would go from the Biscuit Warehouse into the Dibbin House, the Dibbin in Blaze. And then fire on the kills. What kind of work did that entail for you? 
what kind of work did you have to do there? In the biscuit warehouse. Uh, just wheel trolleys around and uh, what do you call it? Girls were brushing, you know, the dust stuff, the cups and the sauce and plates. And we'd be wheeling the stuff over to them. Then when they were brushed, we'd be wheeling it back up into the dipping house, call it the dipping house. That's where the plant is layers. They dipped it. There's a big tubs full of layers, and they dipped the, the lads who were working there would dip it into the layers and put it in racks for the fire so as they could go through the kills. How many is it beyond the trolleys pushing up and down all day in that department? Oh, uh, to be. I'd say about 10 dozen, yeah, to be in racks, you see. Yeah, I'd say about 10 dozen each time, yeah. And how many people were on the trolleys? Oh, the big tour was pushing it, yeah. And what kind of conditions were they to work in? Uh, that was all right, yeah. That wasn't like, it wasn't like more than I mean, it was just, you filled the trolleys and push the trolleys out, you know, like, it wasn't really manual work, it wasn't hard work, you know. And you had plenty of time to add and things like that, yeah. It wasn't rush jobs and all. Was the other one a bit more stressful? Yeah. And were you wearing masks in there? No. <laughs> you were kidding. <laughs> there was no masks in them days. <laughs> and in that department, uh, Francis, were there mostly men or women working there? Women, mostly, yeah. To be only about, I'd say about 10 men. And would, were any of your sisters working there or in that department? Yeah. Yeah, one sister old there, uh, yeah. What was her name? Stella. Stella worked there. And what are we talking now? We're talking probably up into the 60s at this stage, was it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were probably... How old were you, eh? I'd say about 21 or 22. Yeah. And you were still living at home? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And how long did you stay there for? Oh, uh, I suppose about three or four years. Yeah. Then I left and uh, went walking around the town and then all probably different jobs, yeah. How long did you did you do that for? Working around the town? Oh about two or three years. And you came back again then, did you? Yeah, then I come back to party again, yeah, and then I got a job on the kills. Yeah. Why did you come back? Uh just job going. <laughs> so I took it, yeah. Was there always work in the town? No. No, it's hard to get jobs, you know. You could have a job for a fortnight and then it'd be gone and then you might get a job for a month. Like, you know. So there wasn't, there wasn't much jobs around. Mostly everyone went to England, you know. But the other big place where you might get work was the pottery. Pottery, yeah. So you got back into the pottery then? Yeah, I went in on the kills, yeah. And what was that like? Oh, that was great. Yeah, we used to have three ships. Uh, what was it? Six or two. Six or two. Total ten and ten to six. 
And what shifts did you work? All them. We used to have. Then we we uh, finished doing the eight hours, and we done twelve hours. Yeah. So the twelve hours consisted of four days on and four days off. Yeah. Start at six in the morning, finish at six in the evening, and then you start at six in the evening, finish six in the morning. Yeah. Every day. Christmas, Christmas Day, seeing this day, they never throw us down. During the holidays, yeah, they kept them lighting, yeah. So the kilns were kept lighting? Yeah, all the time. And when you worked in the other departments, was that same shift work going on there? No, I had hours in the other departments. Well, I remember my father telling me, or I remember like when I was a young lad, he used to do 56 hours a week. That was the working week that time, you had to do it. Yeah, you had to work all day hard. Uh, they start at 8 in the morning and they'd finish at 6 in the evening. Saturday included. Yeah. And... Uh, then when I went into it, it was for, when I went in as messenger boy, it was uh, 48 hours. Yeah. And by the time I was 16, they cooled down to 40 hours. And everyone was saying, oh, it won't be long now that we have the 36 hour a week. But it never happened. It hadn't even happened today, has it? And that's 60 years ago. Yeah. They hadn't, uh, 39 hours, I think, now. But you think in this day and age there'd be about 30 hours, you know, like in that length of time. Like you went from 58 hours in the 50s and into the 60s, 10 years later, it was down to 40 hours. Two days off, you know, eight hours a day, you take it, two days off, yeah. Yeah, 16 hours went within 10 years, I'd say, or 12 years. They probably in 34, they started at 56, and it went right up till the 60s. So when you were in the killings, though, you were doing four days on, four days off? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Were you, was it, were you wrecked? Pardon? Were you wrecked, tired? No, no, sure. The killings was... Uh, you push a truck in and then you go to the other end and take a truck out or vice versa, whichever way you want to do it. Yeah, and that'll be, they'll be going through it every hour. And that's all you do. You'll be sitting just looking at the temperatures on clocks. And if you're seeing, uh, we say, number four fire going down, you just go, go around with a little knob on it and you just turned it up that little bit to come up to the temperature yeah and then i think it was in the 80s oh no it must have been in the 70s the the side of home and gas yeah so the home and gas that meant that we hadn't touched the fires the fires was automatic the gas hooked itself there was Temperature shut off on them when they got too hot. The temperature lowered the trauma of that thing. They've done it all automatically, so we hadn't to touch them. Yeah. Now we just sit there, and if they're on an hour, you pull a truck in that side and take a truck out every hour, that's all you've done. Yeah. You just sit there reading papers or whatever you want to do. Yeah. Or sweep up. How big were the kilns? Pardon? How big were the kilns? Oh, they were in about... Uh, 100 feet long. To be from here, all the way down, yeah, be sure in 100 feet. Yeah. And to be about 30 trucks in them, I'd say, uh, do you know, like, one... Uh, the 
when you press the thing, to keep pushing them, you know, down and you take them out the other side. Yeah. And the trucks be left in the kilns in the, for the fire, or would they be taken no, out? No, what do you call it? Uh, it'll be kind of cold up this end where you put them. And then the gradually the heat will build up as they go along. I think it went to around 1100 or 1800 centigrade. Yeah, the heat. But they couldn't uh, put them into that heat. They'd all smash up, crack. But they said they went in and slowly they built up the heat. Yeah, and then when they were coming out, slowly they got coal or there'd be fans and all on it. Yeah. And how long would that process take, Francis? Uh, about 24 hours. Yeah, for the truck you put in here to come out the other side. Yeah. And how many, many of you would be manning that system? The only one, well, there was two of us first, and then the, when they put on the gas, they put it to one, one man. Yeah. And before that, were you using oil, was it? Pardon? What were they using? Oil, yeah. Yeah, it was oil before that, it was black crude oil. It was like tower. And uh, they go through the burners, you know, and the burner would be heating it as they went in to hit the, the hot part. Yeah. Then it would come out as a flame. Yeah. And then the cooling off period? Yeah. How long did that take? Uh, that's why I say it'll be 100 feet. So, uh, when they come out of the fire, it'll be about 30 feet to go down before you took it out, you know, go down, keep cooling as it went down, and the same as they come in, it keep heating more and more to go into the fire. And, where and then there'll be fans on top. You know, and where would they be taken then, back down to the to the decoration? Yeah, on the what do you call it? On the biscuit we call it. That's the first fire when it was cleared to go to biscuit. it would be taken into the biscuit warehouse where it'd be brushed all the dust off, and then it'd be put in trolleys to be put into the dipping house to be dipped in the glaze for the glazing. And then, when it was layers, they'd put it on trolleys, and then they'd put it another kill, be a second kill for the blazing. Yeah. Was the second killing the same yeah, size? Yeah, no. When it was on oil, we had to, the burner might get blocked. You had to take the burner out, clean it, and put it back together. There, it worked on there and the oil. You'd have to switch on there first, and then the oil. And pull it back in. Yeah, you, you pull it back in when you put it on the air, and then when it's in, you turn on the oil, you know, for it to hit the flame. You had to do some of the technical. Yeah, yeah. Stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you have to keep the temperature right and on, and then what do you call it? When the block, you'd know right away because there was no oil going through. You know, and black up, so you'd have to pull out the burner, take it apart, and then pull it back together and pull it in. You turn off the oil first when you're taking it out, and then you pull it out, and then when you have it out, you turn off the air, and then you pull it out all together. And then you had a voice, and you put in the voice, and you took it apart and cleaned it out, and then you pull it back together. And pull it back in. You'd always have a spare burner. When you take one out, you'd hook up the spare and pull it back in so as the temperature didn't go down. Yeah. And you wouldn't interfere with production then? No, yeah. The, yeah. And sometimes you'd have a collapse in the kill. Yeah. That meant that. Uh, 
when I was going through the kill, like the wear would be just about two or three inches from from the walls. But sometimes the wear it slip off and we get caught in the wall and they'd knock down the truck. Then they'd have to turn out turn off the kills. Wear about a week, nearly a four day, four days to a week, put it to cool down to get the trucks out. And then they'd have to repair the kill. And then they'd have to start all over again. Start them up again. Yeah, it'd be a big loss. Yeah. It'd be a ordinary a production loss, nearly, if the kill collapse. But rarely it happened. But it can happen, you know. Did it happen with you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it happened maybe once every four years or that. And the big loss really is time. Time, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And how long did you stay there for Francis? Oh, I must have stopped 12 or 14 years, you know. That's a good smell. It was a good job. <laughs> we used to get time in a quarter. Yeah, for shift up. Because you'd be working Saturday, Sunday. And then on the bank holidays, you got travel time. Yeah. Christmas, Easter, June bank holiday. That was all travel time. Which one day I'd nearly get your week's wages on the bank holiday, you know. And by that stage of your life, you were into your 20s now, into your early 30s, were you? Yeah, I was about. Uh, yeah, I started, I think, about, well, I was about 25 when I started on the kilt. And I stopped there till. I'd say I was in my 40s, probably. And did you get married at all? Yeah. I got married in 71. And did your wife work in the factory? Yeah. Did you meet her there? No. No, I married in the dance an inch. <laughs> yeah. Was there a social club in the... Pardon? Was there a social centre or a social club in the factory? In the pottery? No. No. And what would... Say... When would people get paid? Was it a Friday or a Saturday? Uh, when they paid cash, it was a Friday. But then they turned to cheques. That was on a Thursday. Because you had to have time to get your cash or your cheque change. Then it was all cheques. No cash then, it was all paid by check. So it was cash before that? Yeah. And what would you do? Would the town be busy on that Friday night or Saturday night? Oh yeah, sure. The whole town was full of shops. Yeah. It was all clothes shops and grocery shops. Lipton's had a big shop there where uh, the town park is. Yeah, there's a big shop there, Lipton's, besides where the 56 power is. Yeah. And uh, on the way to the road, there was Pierce's, and Larry Pierce had a shop there at the roundabout, you know, where the pole is there. Yeah, and that was a big shop. That was now what they call as big as. Uh, what the biggest shop you got that time, like if uh, what do you call it? Larry Pierce had it. Well, it done more business and done stores <laughs> that time, like yeah. That time the you used to have to wear the tea and the sugar and all, yeah. Would you have noticed much of a difference? Say, would Arklow have been a much more prosperous town than Gorey, for example? 
all the ones, you know. Yeah. Scrapple was a place for employment, you know. <coughs> and was it was Nearly it? everyone from Gordy working there, I think. Yeah. How long did you spend spend in the kilns? Oh, it must have been fourteen years in them, yeah. And when where did you go after that? Oh yeah, I drove lorries. Yeah. Yeah. I drove for Adam and Smith here, me. And did you come back to the factory again? No. No. Uh, that was 92 when I started driving for Adam and Smith, I think. Or 89 or something like that. The early 80s or the early 90s. And then <coughs> I left him, or I left Alan Smith and went to a uh, fellow with the name Martin Gerard. I don't know what he knew him or not. Yeah, I drove taxis and buses then for him. So then he gave it up and I took over. Yeah, still doing it today. And Francis, when did you leave Ark, the, Ark, the, the, the pottery? What year do you, can you remember? 83, well. 83? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, why did you leave? Oh, they were, what do you call them? They were making people in London. <coughs> yeah. So, uh, I took me a drum and see. <coughs> Bought a lorry then and went out on my own. Then I went with Alan and Smith. Um, then I went with Martin Gerard. Then I went with uh, Sunbeam House Services in Bray, draw for them, draw buses for them. Yeah. yeah, and then I started up the. When Martin Gerard finished, I took over the, the buses and taxis off them. You were said you were you were offered redundancy back yeah. in nineteen eighty two or three, was it? Yeah. Was the factory on the decline then, or? Well, the Japanese had took it then, yeah, and it seemed that they were more into not a hockey than the pottery. It was only kind of a back door for the Japanese came to the America, come America. You see, once they went to the factory, they were in. Then they could ship out their own stuff. Nothing you could do about it. But before, if they weren't allowed in, they couldn't do that. They wouldn't have been allowed to ship their stuff into the come America. And when did your father and your other family members, when did they leave? Oh, the father left about, I'd say about 68, through bad health, you know. Then the sisters got married and they left, you know. Was it a big employment for women? Yeah. Yeah, it was great employment for women. There wouldn't have been that many other opportunities, I'd say, for women. For women at that time, no. There was nothing I don't think of. Them. Did you do you look back fondly on the time in Art or do you have any regrets or I know it was alright, yeah. Do you think the town suffered when it closed? Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a big loss, fair blow. It should never have closed. And would there be many of your fellow workers still around? Would you just meet up at all? or um, Would there be any of the men or the women you work with? Are they around then? Any of the men or women that you worked with already or before, are they still around? Not many of them. 
Ja, vi har også været nede med. Det må ikke blive ærte forældre på søndag, der er mig, der vi har lidt. And did you know any of the people growing up that worked there back in the 1930s? Did you know any of the old men that worked there, or the women that worked in it back oh, in the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so when I went in, I was 59. She was only gone 24 years at that time. Yeah, and all the muggers have been still there, you know, best part of them, yeah. You know when all the the factory that there was once there, what's there now? I don't think there's anything there. No, I, I never took any notice. I wouldn't say there's anything there. I'm not sure now. And what happened to the old buildings, the killings, the Oh yeah, the They knocked all them down, they were gone. I think it's on the side from there, I'm not sure now. I never mind, I passed by it all right, but I never took any notice. And you know when you'd have all the breakages and all the... Was there a, a dump where everything was yeah. dumped? Yeah. Where's that? Where the dump? Everywhere. <laughs> uh, they used to be uh, all waste ground all around, you know, and they dump all the stuff on that. Yeah. Would you use it for filling? Yeah, yeah, filling them. Yeah, all the swamp ground and all, they throw it into it. Yeah. So, are there places around the town if you went digging, you'd find? No, because there's all housing that's <laughs> it's built on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What housing estates are built on them? Uh, up there, uh, what do you call it? Up there, as you go, Pogori, uh, what do you call it? Knocking around, knocking around up there. Yeah, there was a, a big, huge, Dump up there and they used to dump it, yeah. There was a lot of them dumped up there, you yeah. know. I remember them dumping it in Gory. Do you know where the new school is up on the Carrier Road? Up there, about half a mile up in the fields, they were dumping dead up there, yeah. Are the fields? Yeah. Can you remember the fields? Yeah. Or they, are they built they up? all houses built on them now, yeah. Do you know what houses and states were built on them? Yeah. What houses and states are there? Oh no, no housing and states. Just uh, houses built on their own, you know. Yeah. And when you're talking about a dump on them, will you be talking like a silage trailer load? What kind of scale of dump? Would it be big? Would it be the size of a... Oh yeah, it would be big, yeah. Sure, it would be a whole field. Yeah. See the the dump if there's anything wrong, crooked or the print didn't come out right or anything, yeah. Yeah, the dump it on. And do you remember seeing that happening? Yeah, yeah, sure I haven't got that problem. Yeah. So we'll be waiting for the lorries to come up with the soap thumb and the to about forty or fifty up there collecting the tail. Yeah. And then, the, the, in the later years, they started breaking it. They got iron bars and they used to break all the stuff before them. Yeah. Rather than letting the people take it up above with the dump, yeah. people be scavenging. Yeah. Yeah, they'd be no other scavengers getting it. Yeah. But there'd be nothing wrong with it? No. No, the only print wrong or crooked or something, yeah. Do you have it's better to rail off a crooked plate than no plate. 
do you have any of those bits of the in the seconds or the imperfection? Would you have any of them at all? What's that? The old ones that maybe an imperfection or a No. No. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be mostly crooked or print wrong or something like that, you know. Yeah. So you spent how many years there? About thirty. And you went from the messenger boy to the killings. Yeah. And in between. Yeah. Now when the when the workers would be coming in in the morning, they had to be in at eight o'clock. He'd blow a hold of about a minute half. Yeah. And then you see them all running for the gates. And then three minutes after that, he closed the gate and you couldn't get in. Yeah, they wouldn't let you in. So if you wanted to go in, whoever was on the gate, you'd have to phone down to whatever apartment you were in to see with your man, whoever was over you, let you in or not. To see if you were three days late in a row, he wouldn't let you in. But if you were, if you weren't three days late, he'd let you in, you know, if you're only done it once or twice, he'd let you in. But then that meant that if he locked you out, you would have to get you know, coming to work and you just missed. So you didn't get paid for that half day. Yeah, the same in the afternoon, the very same thing. If you weren't there a minute and a half on, he'd blow the hood or to get everyone in. And then, what do you call it, three minutes after half one, he'd lock the gates. Yeah, no one could go in then. Tell the phone up and see, yeah. <clears throat> you had to clock in, yeah. See, so you had a number, yeah. So it was a big part in your life. Yeah. Yeah. When did your wife leave? Oh, when she got married a few weeks after. Yeah. Did she go back at all? No. No, she didn't like working in the party. Yeah. Why was that? Ah, uh, she, she liked mine children doing housework, things like that, yeah. She didn't like factory work, yeah. Did you mind it? Pardon? Did you mind the work? Oh yeah, no, it was alright, yeah, yeah. It was good, like. Yeah, no, I didn't mind no matter what I was working at. I'm still working. <laughs> and long may that continue? I don't believe in retirement. No, honestly, yeah. I couldn't sit at home, yeah.